3101 in traffic pursuit. The dangerous consequences of high speed police pursuits. From this Wisconsin case that left the 16 year old dead. Crash, 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 we need medical. To this pursuit in Ohio that killed two innocent bystanders. Oh, he just crashed, he just crashed, he just crashed, he just crashed. And this case involving Georgia State Patrol in 2021. This successful, this successful. Before it ended here, it started on Hunter's Mill Drive in Paulding County. Driver Charlie Moore pulled over on the side of the road, concerned why Highway Patrol was following close behind. Trooper David Peterson asked for his driver's license. Moore refused. I'm not doing that. What crime did I commit? What crime did I commit? You have to you have to articulate that and also ask for your supervisor. Minutes later, two county deputies arrived on the scene. Officers break his window. Moore then takes off. What the Records show Trooper Peterson's speed tops 95 miles per hour, passing two deputy patrol cars on a narrow two-lane road to reach Moore's vehicle before knocking him off the road using a pit maneuver. This successful, this successful. Moore and his son survive. I just want my mom. <laughs> but someone in the back seat did not. 12-year-old Leedon Boykins, a seventh grader who loved to play basketball. His mother, Tony, learned about the crash from a neighbor. I hung up the phone and I just instantly knew. Uh, I called my husband like something bad has happened. Tony blames the trooper for her son's death, for engaging in an unnecessary dangerous pursuit, knowing Moore was not accused of a violent crime before the chase. Trooper Peterson claims he didn't know children were in the vehicle. There was no need for a chase. You didn't, there was no need for a chase. A new report published by the U.S. Department of Justice this week agrees. Among the report's recommendations, pursuits should only take place when a violent crime has been committed or when the suspect poses an imminent threat to commit another violent crime. Georgia has no such policies. It largely allows troopers to determine when it's appropriate to engage in high-speed chases. Police need discretion, but they also need some parameters under what circumstances should you pursue. Chuck Wexler is the executive director of the Police Executive Research Forum, which produced the report on behalf of the agency. It's not as though we're saying don't ever pursue, but we're saying if you're going to pursue, Make sure that it is for the right reasons. The real important question in all of this is, is it worth it? Is it worth endangering that person who you're pursuing, the police officer who's pursuing them, and that third party? A call to action as pursuits within Georgia's Department of Public Safety are on the rise, increasing every year over the past five years. 1,600 last year alone. Across all state law enforcement agencies, at least 493 people were killed in pursuits over the past two decades. The Georgia Department of Public Safety declined to respond to the increase in pursuits, the report's recommendations, and the chase that led to Leiden's death. 1233, there are children in the car. Despite knowing that some of the officers knew there were children in the vehicle before the crash. So if you have kids in the car, if I can get up here, I'll pass them and we'll try and box If you could have an opportunity to speak with this trooper, mm -hmm. what would you say? Tell, tell me the reason why my son isn't here today. A 12-year-old kid is dead behind the decisions you made to do a pit maneuver on a car. A violent pit maneuver. 